Thank you for joining me. This is Whitney with the Yoga Art Space Studio, and today's practice is all about energizing the upper chakras using inversions. Each inversion that we'll take, we'll try to maintain for at least some amount of time. We'll start off from easier and work to harder and harder inversions. And so we'll begin taking a nice kneeling position so that we can prepare for a downward facing dog. Hands plant, tuck the toes, lift the hips up high, and we'll try to hold this downward facing dog longer than we normally do. If we normally do five breaths, perhaps let's try 10 breaths, if that's not too much for the body. Breathe, feel how the muscles are working here. See if you can make this more about the stack of the bones allowing the lift to happen rather than just the muscular effort and squeezing and working so hard. Now let's begin to walk the feet forward up to the top of the mat and when we make our way there perhaps hands come to elbow creases to just hang for a few moments. Begin to heel till the feet wider, hanging on to either outside edges of feet or just hanging or dropping down, releasing, relaxing. Begin to heel toe the feet back together, returning back to the normal, hanging heavy. And notice how the whole time our head has been downward, as we travel back to downward facing dog, we stay with that energy, drop the elbows down, lift up the hips and walk the toes in, downward facing dog, the head has still been down. This is that large action that energizes the upper chakras, is this head staying down below the heart for an extended period of time. So this is our dolphin pose. Hold for a few more breaths. This one's a bit harder to hold for longer terms, so eventually you'll need a child pose. Take it when you need it. And then when you're preparing to come up, you can choose the same thing. Taking dolphin pose once more, or if headstand is in your practice currently, maybe take a headstand. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, walk in as deep as you can, and then rise up to our headstand. Feeling yourself lifting up tall, much like a candlestick. The tighter the core stays engaged, the easier this becomes. Drop down when you need to, taking another moment with child pose, helping to release that pressure from the spine. And then when you're ready, let's swing our legs underneath. Travel onto our back for plow pose. If you ever need a supported plow instead, a supported shoulder stand, that's absolutely fine. Use a block or a bolster. Otherwise, bring the hands under the back, start to lift the hips up high. Try to stack yourself upright like a candlestick. Hands continuing to walk in the place that will help the hips to lift the highest. Maybe from shoulder stand, we eventually take plow pose, toes dropping down, legs trying to stay as straight as possible. Only if the toes actually touch, then you can release hands into a clasp behind your back. If toes don't touch, 
Don't worry about it. Leave hands on, on the back to protect that area. Slowly roll back down. Set the feet down. Lift the hips up so that you can sit on each of the hands, palm face down. And then lift the heart up. Keep the heart energy lifting as the head backs down. Crown of the head barely grazing down onto the ground for a little bit of activation. So many inversions today. So much time with the rest of the body above the head. And so now as we release that fish pose, we relax into our shavasana, letting the body return back to a neutral, comfortable, receiving place. Stay as long as you have time. Thank you for joining me today. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.